Hey peeps, in this video we're going to show you how to download the new versions of Inkscape and Inkstitch and we'll also go over a few new features that were added to Inkstitch. So let's get to it. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get to downloading our newest version of Inkscape and Inkstitch. But before we do that, we're going to go ahead and make sure that we have the latest operating system uh, for our computer. And right now we are sitting on Sonoma on our MacBook Pro here. So that's going to be important anyways. Let's go ahead and get into Inkscape where we can download the latest version. So we're going to click on the current stable version. You also have the option of beta testing the next version. We're going to go ahead and stick with the stable version. Click on that. And then we're going to go ahead and click on uh, Mac OS for our operating system. And then we are operating on an Intel MacBook Pro. The newer versions that run on the M1, M2, and M3 chip, you're going to want to click on the ARM architecture. Okay, and it's done. Before we get into installing and all that, we're going to go ahead and get the latest version of Inkstitch downloaded. So same thing, inkstitch.org, and we can click on Install Inkstitch. All right, so we're going to click again on our operating system. Okay, so now we're going to select which uh, one. Again, we're on an Intel chip and we're running Sonoma, which is higher than Monterey. So we're going to go ahead and select this one. Download will start and it's just finished. So now we can close out of this. And we want to make sure we close Inkscape. Actually, it's completely quit, so it's uh, not running at all. And now we can run the update for Inkscape. And we're always going to do Inkscape first. So Inkscape. And then all we have to do is drag this into applications, which should update. It's going to ask us if we want to replace our previous version. And yes, we do. All right, so Inkscape is complete with its installation. And before we open it, we're going to go ahead and update the Ink Stitch add-on here. Once we double click that box, uh, you can see the uh, installer for Inkstitch pops up. And I will say that the installer for Inkstitch is much simpler than its first version that we played around with. So now all we have to do is kind of follow the, the guided instructions, really actually very simple. So we'll hit continue. Uh, yep, we want to install it on our hard drive. Install. And that's it. Hit close and we can move our old version to trash or the installer to trash. All right, so now we can open up our new version of Inkscape. The first time you open this program, it's gonna ask you, are you sure you wanna open it? Because it's been a, it was a file downloaded from the internet and we're gonna hit okay. Okay, so we are in, uh, we can change some defaults here um, with our checkerboard pattern. I think we're good with that. We do like dark mode. Alright, so here we are. Now that we have successfully downloaded Inkscape and Inkstitch, we're going to go over a few of the new features. Yeah, the first feature we want to talk about is they've added a bunch of new lettering, which seems to come with every update of Inkstitch. Uh, people add custom lettering, which is really awesome uh, because the first version that we used lettering with only had, I would say, a handful of lettering fonts. Okay, so here's the lettering GUI, uh, graphical user interface, and you can see that they made some updates here. Obviously you type in the font that you want to be created uh, into a nice satin, and then obviously you can pick your font here, and you can see there's a ton of fonts here, a lot of complex fonts as well. But what I found as the most significant change with this is the ability to sort. So if you had a specific type of font you were looking for, say, I want a font that is an applique, and I want to see what my options are. Well, I can hit applique here and then it sorts it so that, oh, here are all of my applique style fonts, which is, I think, really useful versus having to scroll through every single font. Like if you left this blank, you saw, I have to now find, okay, which one is an applique font? Um, and then you can see obviously that there's a bunch of other types of filters here. So if you wanted a multicolor filter and you can see all of your multicolor filter fonts. So that's pretty neat as well. Yeah, that's definitely a time saver. Uh, the other great thing is they've added the ability to automatically add commands to your font before you export it out to your design. 
So in the past, you would have had to export your lettering and then added commands later in the uh, commands extension. Uh, but now we can actually add our uh, trims to each letter, word, or line as you see fit. And then you can use command symbols here as well. You could scale the font to different sizes here. Uh, and that's all really neat. So we can export this and you'll see now that it will come with its commands. So if you're interested in some of these new fonts, you can see them listed here on the inkstitch.org website. And if you actually click on it, it will give you some useful information about sizing and colors and density and all of that, uh, which again can be uh, very helpful if you're having issues with uh, your design using these fonts. So always refer back to that inkstitch.org website and you can see some detailed information about each font. And now the next thing we're going to cover is a new fill feature that you can do with shapes. Yeah, they call it tartan. Uh, and it's really kind of like a, a plaid, which is really neat. So we're just gonna use this as our example here, just a circle, but we wanna show you how you can get a different result than just like a regular fill of blue here. So we're gonna go to extensions, ink stitch, uh, tool fill, and then we're gonna click on this new feature tartan. And in here, what we can do is basically add as many colors as we would like to a plaid pattern. You can see right now we have black and blue uh, picked up uh, because our base layer that we picked was blue, so it automatically selects blue. Uh, but we can change our colors in here. So we can change our color to red. All right, so you can see here right now we just have a, a blue underlay because that was our base layer and then our red plaid look. And we can add uh, another color here, add the white, and you can see that. We can add more colors. And you can see you can make very, very customizable plaid patterns here. And then you can also change the size of it. So I think this is really neat. Like if you change this down, it makes just another interesting looking pattern. You can play around with this and get very customizable fills. And again, all this is, is a new style of fill that is going to make any of the projects or shapes that you're working on look very customizable. So that's really neat. We're gonna go ahead and apply that. I like that. So now we're going to view this in the simulator in realistic preview, but there's actually been some changes to those. There've been a lot of extensive changes to the simulator realistic preview. Most importantly is that they've separated the simulator from the realistic preview. So no longer can you click on the simulator here and then click a button to get the realistic look uh, of your finished design. Uh, but you can see now the simulator is purely just a simulator. It's just gonna show you the steps all along the way. And obviously you can still adjust speed uh, direction as well as fast forward or rewind, etc. So again, can be useful. Uh, you can get some good info on it, number of thread counts, um, number of stitches, etc. Uh, but what we're looking for is kind of a realistic look. What is this going to look like when it stitches out? No longer can we find it here in the simulator. We can find it in the stitch out plan. So if we go to ink stitch, visualize export, stitch plan preview. And now, well, you can de decide uh, to get rid of your original design or hide it. Uh, you can uh, lower the opacity. So basically showing that uh, we're gonna leave it as unchanged, just our preference. The render mode, you can change it to realistic view, realistic view, high quality, and a realistic vector. Uh, this will take a while to kind of render, but it does make it so that you could zoom in a little bit more, but for our purposes, realistic view, high quality seems to be a good rendition of what this is gonna look like in real life. Additionally, you can adjust or, or select what do you actually wanna see. We don't wanna see needle points or our locks or anything like that. We do wanna render jump stitches if there are gonna be jump stitches, uh, just to kind of give us a, a look, but we could obviously take that off. We can do a live preview here um, to see what it looks like in real life. All right, so here it is on the side. Now, we can't move or select anything until we hit apply or close, uh, but I did wanna point out here, we did have move stitch plan beside the canvas, so that's why it places it 
off to the side here. If we didn't select that, it puts it right on top of the design. And I personally don't find that helpful as, you know, if I have more adjustments I need to make, uh, I would want it not in the way. Uh, so that's why we have move it beside the canvas. So once I hit apply here, we can actually start looking at the full picture here. And you can see it actually, you know, it is a uh, rendered high quality realistic view. So this, this is pretty neat. Um, I like that I'm able to see it side by side. Uh, that is cool. But what I think is the, a place where InkStitch could have implemented a really cool feature is live updates. What I mean by that is if I adjust this image here, I would think it'd be pretty awesome if this automatically adjusted over here, showing me what it would, what change it would be. So if I saw that there were issues or uh, something I didn't want to see on this side, I would want the ability to immediately adjust it on this side on the design and then it take effect over here, but it doesn't do that. You have to kind of re-export this rendered view. Maybe in the future they'll be able to do, right now it's, it's not an option to do. You can move it around, like if this is in the way and you want it down here or whatever. Uh, but again, it's just a basically a picture that's right here and it doesn't adjust or change when you adjust your design. Uh, maybe in the future, hopefully, uh, that will take effect where you make an update here and it automatically uh, change out in the rendered plan. So now we're going to go over a bunch of new satin tools that have been added. So uh, InkStitch has added a lot of different satin updates and different types of satins that you can change and adjust just like the fills have adjusted. Uh, we're going to go ahead and show you some of those. So first thing is we're going to turn this stroke into a satin. So we'll go to InkStitch tools, satin, convert line to satin. And now you can see we've got a satin line here. So if I uh, select on that, uh, we can go to params and you can see right now it is a satin. Well, they've also added a zigzag, which really kind of looks very similar, but a, a satin is more like a sawtooth, um, whereas a zigzag is more like peaks and like equal distant moving the needle across over and over. And I'll go ahead and reselect this satin column so you can see that close and really hard to see here with a round object but if we used a straight line you would see that it is moving over and then this line is actually straight and then it moves over and this line straight so very subtle um, again i don't think the average person is really going to notice a difference between those two but see, the second thing they added is this s stitch and this is pretty unique i really like this and you can see here it kind of moves over on the same side and then a straight line moves over on the same side and then straight line. That is really cool looking, or at least I like the way that looks. So that's nest stitch. Now what I think is the really big change, a really nice change that they've added is the ability to do multicolored satins. So I'm just gonna leave this as it is and I'm gonna show you, we can actually do some really cool stuff. And we can go to ink stitch, tool satin, multicolor satin, and we can show you what this looks like. So as it sits, pretty uh, standard, no, no difference. I'm just gonna change the color so we can see it better. But I can add a color to this satin. And you can see now my satin line is composed of two different colors, and that's pretty unique. Um, again, we can add as many colors as we want uh, to have the effect that we want. And then what I think is really neat is we can adjust the way this looks uh, by changing some of the settings here. So overflow is basically going to make it so uh, these colors will kind of blend in to each other a little bit more. There, there will be some overlap. Um, and then overflow, obviously right and left for each side of uh, the specific satin here. Uh, and then you can add some pull compensation that will expand these out a little bit for more of that overlap. And then this uh, monochrome color width, it will make the heights not the same. So it will kind of blend out. I'll just show you, it's probably the best way to just see this. If I change that to say five, you can see what this will look like now. Really neat looking. Uh, again, this is 
kind of blending over each other to make a, a different look, a different effect. And then as I add overflow to this, you will see that you can quickly get a very customized looking satin stitch. So that's all really neat. The next feature we're going to show you is the Generate Swatches tool. This feature essentially shows you different settings for the same design side by side. So I'll just start by drawing a square and I'm going to be making this a ripple stitch, so I will only need the stroke. And to change the stitch method, I'm going to have to go to params. And once again, I want to change the method to a ripple stitch. And now we can go to Extensions, Ink Stitch, Edit, Generate Swatches. Now it will allow you to choose the settings that will change in each swatch. I'll change the start value to 0.5 and do an increase by 0.5. Also, I'm going to change the param. And in order to actually get the swatches, I have to add them by increasing the rows and columns. And I think that's good, so I'll hit Apply. Now I can select all of my squares and view them in the simulator. And now we can see our design with a bunch of different settings so we know which one has the best outcome for our specific design. Also another cool feature is that you can change the background color of the simulator which can make it easier to see your designs depending on the color. So if you have a design you want to get information about, such as the stitch method it's using, then this new element info tool may be helpful for you. In order to access it, you'll want to select all of your design and go to Extensions, Ink Stitch, Troubleshoot, and Element Info. Now a window will open up and it will tell you more about your design and different information that could be helpful when you go to embroider it. If you want to easily create a hand embroidery look using machine embroidery, now with this new red work tool, all it takes is the click of a few buttons. The only thing you need is a stroke that's a running stitch, and then you can go to ink stitch, tool stroke, and red work. It will let you adjust all the settings, but all we're going to do is increase the number of repeats for now. The only thing left to do is hit apply.